Hi guys, it's Grant from Local Scraper. I just wanted to introduce you to the LinkedIn Scraper. Um, with the newest version of the LinkedIn Scraper, as soon as you open it, a Chrome window should also open um, that is at the LinkedIn login page. Um, we had to do this because LinkedIn has become very picky about which browsers uh, visit its site. So we are now picking a mainstream browser and it's Google Chrome. So you will need Google Chrome installed um, before you will be able to scrape uh, any data with the LinkedIn scraper. If you do not have it installed, there will be a message here saying you don't have it installed. Um, if you do have it installed, it will pop open and it will say load in. Uh, see, uh, please log in. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log in. Okay, now that we're logged into LinkedIn, um, I will go over the scrape types. Um, let's do a quick thing so you can see. Let's see, sure, sales. So you can see what I am talking about. Okay, so the scraper only works on a search results page that looks like this, that is targeted towards people only, um, that does not scrape jobs or posts or companies or um, other stuff. If the schools and groups look exactly like this, um, it might work. I have not tested that. Um, nobody's ever really requested it. So we're on a search results page and it looks something like this. Now the full scrape will gather each one of the 10 people on here. It will gather the URL to their LinkedIn profile page as the first stage of the program. Um, the second stage of the program is that it will individually visit each one of these profile pages one at a time. Um, so if we go to a profile page, the LinkedIn full scraper will get the name, the current uh, title, the company here, their, their education, their full location, their number of contacts, and in this small section, where you can write a um, description of yourself kind of thing. If an email has been added to this section, the full scraper will find it. Um, it is very rare for people to put emails in there because of LinkedIn's in-message. Um, why do you need to have an email there if you're perfectly okay with them just messaging you through LinkedIn? So it is very hard to now find emails on LinkedIn but if somebody does have one in this profile section, uh, the full scrape will find it. Now if we go back to the search results page, if we were to instead do a quick scrape, it would scrape the details that you can see on this page, which is the name, uh, the profile image, the link to their profile page, uh, their current title position, um, the location, and this current. Um, and it will do that for all these people and it will do them all 10 at a time. So the quick scraper will scrape all 10 of these people and whatever details uh, we see and then it will go to the next page and scrape all 10 people and the next page and the next page and so on. With the full scraper, um, actually quick, um, with the quick scraper that means for each page you load you're getting 10 results. So by page two, you have 20 people scraped, but you've only visited two pages of LinkedIn. Okay. Now with the full scrape, um, as you saw, it would go to the page and scrape the details that we showed uh, just a minute ago. So what it'll do is it'll visit this, this search page. It'll grab all 10 people. Um, it'll continue to grab people until it hits the end of the people or until it hits your max listings, which we'll go over in a sec. Um, so for every 10, for every URL it grabs, it will also visit that person's URL. So instead of the, unlike the quick scraper, by the end of page two, the scraper would have visited uh, 20 pages of people. So if you don't need the possible email 
and you don't need the full uh, details. I accidentally clicked on it. The full details of the um, the user, like their full location, then the quick might be better for you because it is less page views and less times uh, less pages the scraper has to open. Okay. Um, you have three methods of going through uh, listings. Uh, the one I recommend most people use is the manual mode. You just check this little box and then you run the scraper. Um, manual mode means that it starts at whatever the browser is currently at. See, we're on our search for um, salespeople up here. Uh, we're on people, and if, say, we were on page, I don't know, six, and we have manual mode selected, it will now start from here and start scraping. It will not go backwards to page one through five and all that. We'll just start on whatever page you're on. So if you can get to some sort of page of search results of people that looks like this, um, you can break it down by sales and location and sales people in Miami, Florida, or whatever you want to search. So long as you have a page of people like this, um, you can check the manual mode and then start the scraper and it will run. Um, the custom URL is if you have a URL like up here in the top. Um, so far all we have is keywords, uh, sales, so it's pretty straightforward. But if you were to do your searches in another browser, um, on another computer, I don't know, something, um, you can take the URL from up here, you can copy and you can paste it into the program and the program will now start at um, whatever custom URL you put in. So when you first open the program, the window's over there, you log into LinkedIn, you select one of these, full or quick, you put in the custom URL and you hit run and it will visit this URL, which happens to be this one which at the end of it you can see also says page 6. So you can do that. That's a custom URL. Um, that is if you have URLs from something else that you want to paste into here for it to scrape. It must be a LinkedIn URL and it must look something like this, a search for people. A custom URL list is a semi-automated way to run the scraper. Um, this highly depends on your account level and how many pages LinkedIn will let you load. But if you wanted to, unlike um, sales here, we can have our sales URL and that could be our first custom URL. And then say if we said marketing instead, that would be a second custom URL. So what you do with those is you make a plain text file using Notepad uh, it's part of Windows, just open Notepad. Um, you would copy this URL, you would put it in a text file uh, on the first line of the file, you'll hit return or enter, and then you'll put another, the next URL, return, enter, the next URL, so you have a nice little list of a URL one by line, you know, one per line kind of thing. So you can choose the file, uh, click here, uh, tell the program where your text file is, uh, load the text file, and then what it'll do is it'll start scraping on whatever the first custom URL is, and as soon as it finishes that, it moves on to the second URL, finishes that, moves on to the third, and it saves them all as three separate uh, files. Um, over here, we have a little uh, status thing. We have the records found in current record. If you are using the quick version of the program, you do not have to worry about current record because it gets them 10 at a time per page like we showed before. So it will get all 10 of these people, click next, get all 10 of those people, click next, get all 10, and there is no second stage of the program. Um, as soon as it's done going through the pages um, or hits your max listings, it will start saving the data in this bottom window, which is now the readme page. Um, but down here will be a nice little table that will have your data laid out in it. If you were doing the full scrape on the other hand, records found will continue because uh, that is how many people you found. So say on this page there are 10, 10 people, so records found is 10. Um, if that's all it had found, 
then it would start um, current record one, which would be this person's profile. Current record two, this person three, this person four, this person. So you know if records found says 10 and current record found says five, that means the program is halfway through the scrape and you should start to see uh, listings down here in the uh, bottom. Over here we have the log window. Um, the log window right now says Chrome is loaded. Uh, please log in. We have done that. We've gone to a page. If we were to, you know, start the scraper, this will change. And it will say, you know, you have started a quick scrape. Uh, we are going to the page and we are now scraping the listings. Um, it'll also say like job finished when you are done, when the program is done and the uh, scraper is completed. So this just kind of keeps you up to date with what it's doing. Um, max listings I touched upon. Um, this is a roundabout number. Um, so it is not exact. If you would uh, only like the first 10 out of 500 people, you set this to 10. Um, pretty simple. If you want the first 100 out of 500, you set it to this, 100. Um, it is not exact which means it will not stop at 10. Um, it's kind of a quick hack in the program. Um, it will more than likely stop on about 30 if there are, if you set mass listings to 10. That is because you set it to 10. After it goes to the first page and then clicks next, it goes, hey, do I have more than 10 results? And it goes, no, I have 10 results, and it goes, Okay, then we'll scrape the next page. So it goes through this page and it gathers all these people and it hit next. And then it goes, do I have more than 10 results? And it says, yes, I have more than 10 results. So it will then just scrape whatever page it's on and then complete. Um, it does this because if you have a, a weird page and you have like max listings of one and a page comes up and it has like 10 people on it, it'll just get kind of weird. So it does need to check at the end of the page, not at the beginning of the page, if that makes sense. So all you have to remember is that it is not an exact number, but it will be close enough. It'll be one page um, past it, and then one more page of we're already on that page. We'll just get whatever's here. Um, wait time by default is about two to three seconds. This is the time between pages, so say if this page just loaded, the scraper will scroll down and it will wait two to three seconds, somewhere in there, a random number, um, and then it will click next. next. So if we had this as six to eight seconds, it will load this page, it will scroll down, and then it will wait somewhere random between six and eight seconds. So it'll wait six seconds, eight seconds, whatever and then click next. Um, the purpose of this is if your internet is kind of slow and the pages don't fully load in the two to three seconds, um, you could set it longer. Um, if you want to look more human, say if you want to make it seem like you've gone to this page and you're reading these people over and none of them seem quite right for whatever your purpose is, so, but that would have taken you, how long, it would have taken you eight seconds? So maybe you want to put 8 to 12, and now whenever it loads a page and scrolls down, it now waits somewhere between 8 and 12 seconds. So this looks more human to LinkedIn. Um, I'm not sure if LinkedIn really cares, but um, if you do, or if a problem comes up, then you can set the uh, timing here. Uh, some sites have a thing where it says, hey, you're scraping too fast. Um, this would be a way to slow that down. Okay, um, I believe that is it. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to check the README page. It goes over the custom URLs a bit um, and other sections. Okay, 